Okay. Brilliant. Okay. So stay, come on, stay Parmenides hypothesis. Shall I begin with myself and the hypothesis of myself? That's right. Okay, I just wasn't sure. I should begin from myself, all right? Okay, sketch it out. How important is hey? How important is the word weather? The meaning of it, fair. How we're going to understand it? How does the idea of oneself relate <clears throat> to whether one the one is or is not? Take a look. Weather. One thirty-seven. Tell me why, first tell me what Parmenides' own hypothesis is and why he has the expression whether, whether or not the one is or is not. Self, but what happens? I don't know how to say this exactly. So they're hypothesizing about the one self, but the, what, the, what they're going to explore is whether one is or one is not, uh, and they're taking the one hypothesis in two ways. It's one way of doing it. Yeah. Did you explain it? Explain it. Well, I I, I was having reference to a conversation we had about the opening of the first hypothesis. And it talks about whether, if, if one is, can one be many? And that's a way of exploring if one is. Mm -hmm. And yet, if he's supposed to be still exploring his own hypothesis. So I take it that the if one is, is the one of the oneself, as it connects later in the beginning of the dialogue. Is that an explanation? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a strange thing we saw about it. What was that, Barbara? What was that? Yeah, it was what? Kind of was what? It was kind of a strange what? Thing we settled on.
tell you. Um, want to deal with this one? Right, if Boy Scouts. Uh, now, whether boys exist or does not. Well, what would that mean? He's like, it's like he's, he's exploring one part of his hypothesis or one section. And he's questioning its existence. He's only questioning the existence of boys, but not of scouts, which, would you agree? Right. Yeah. Not self, yeah. Yeah. So it works out. Now, what would you learn if you were to do this? More about boys than I ever wanted to know. Steve just said something. More about boys than I ever wanted to know. I've learned a lot about boys. What would that tell you if you were explored it that way? Yeah. It would not tell you the state of mind of the voice. It might also tell you there are different kinds of cells or different, they're like it, it doesn't limit self. Well, I was just thinking that. Try it, look her. If Boy Scouts, then if boys exist, would the, then what? Hmm. Now you have to specify what is it about boys' existence that among the boys, right? Among the boys, there's likely to be a separation of those that can be joining into the Boy Scouts and those that cannot. Agreed? Interesting. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Oh. And uh, take the other side. If Boy Scouts, but boys did not exist. Then you couldn't have Boy Scouts. Well, come on. Could you still talk about the Scouts? Might be able to. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. But mm -hmm. you need, you need uh, somebody else to, to be the Scouts. Okay. All right. Go back to this now. All right? The one self, whether the one is or is not. What is that doing then? Okay. The one self. If the one is, right? Then he's focusing on just this aspect, is he not? Yeah. Yeah. And on the other hand, if it's not. Mm -hmm. Agree? Mm -hmm. oh, see, this is. The two join together as a unity. So he's going to then talk about the qualifier in order to discover something about what's qualified, the self. Okay, let's see how he does it. All right? Let's get a couple of readers and go through the first couple of lines of the Parmenides' first hypothesis. Oh. 
three. Good. Another one? <coughs> Thank you. Well then, if one is, could not the one be many in some other way? How could it be many? Uh, find that curious? Yeah. All right. Look here. <laughs> Agree? Mm -hmm. If one is, mm -hmm. then it would not be many. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that's not what he's doing. No. Right. No. He's asking some weird question. That's a weird question. Yeah. yeah, he's asking if it could be many in some other way. Like, what was the first way? Well, it's not there. Okay, look here. Uh, do you find the puzzling? Sure. Good. The whole book is puzzles. <coughs> Although. All right. Okay, go ahead. How could it be many? According Wait to that. Aristoteles is right, isn't he? Mm. On yeah. the face of it. Right on the face of it. He's right with it, is he not? Yep. Let's go. Accordingly then, neither can any part belong to self, nor can self be a whole. No. Uh, say, so what would you say is the relationship between the, this statement and the preceding one? Uh, by the way, should statements follow one another? Like, should there be some linkage? Yes. So that what is said in the first statement is the implications are carried on into the second? That would be nice. Yeah. And then there can be an, a, con a conclusion? Yep. No. Is that right, Julian? Yeah. No. What do you think of what you do? Well, I, I mean, no. there should, it would be nice, but there are other ways it can be done. No. Deal with the next statement. Okay. Uh, because the part is in some way a part of a whole. So, look here. Is, well, what is the subject matter in the second one? Oh. That. Um, is it the one? You mean Parmenides too, here? The part, <coughs> nor, no part can belong to the self, nor can self be a whole. No. Is there any relationship between the, the first statement and the second of Parmenides? Did he move away from talking about the one and is now talking about the, the idea of the self? Yeah. Yes. He's concluding about the self. Then there's no connection between the two. Right. Therefore, it's not rational. Well, that's all. I don't know that I would say that it's not rational, Pierre. I would just say that um, it doesn't work the way that we want it to in the sense that you were talking about earlier. Like it doesn't do a mathematical proof step one, step two, step three with each one uh, building upon the previous. In that <coughs> sense, it does not, right. But it still could be rational, like Julie said, in some other right. way. If it is rational, then you would need to find some mean term between the idea of the one and the idea of the self. And that's going to come next. Yes. He needs something in between this to talk about the relation of the one and the self. Mm -hmm. So that he can conclude, as he does in his second remark. Those are Parmenides' remarks. Agree? It's missing. Yeah. Well, therefore, it's sloppy reasoning, isn't it? Well, it's, a, it's kind of a misuse. 
He'd be a good mystery writer. <laughs> Look, we're not here to save Greek philosophy. We're trying to find understand it. He'd, he'd have trouble getting funding for a sequel. <laughs> All right. Okay. Try the third one of Parmenides. Um, because the part is in some way a part of the whole, of a whole. So, what do you think of that? Now we're talking about what? Part? Whole. Yeah. yeah, he's bringing up a new topic. Oh, oh, thank you. Without making any connection between the two. Yeah. Ah, so he needs another one, doesn't he? of some statement that will show how the idea of the whole is connected to either the self and or the one. Well, and to, oh. yeah. Does he do it? No. Therefore, another myth. Right? This is really sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, look here. There are a lot of people in the game who look upon this dialogue and say it is not comprehensible. And we're seeing why they have a right to say that. But then we have to say, why are we reading it? i go for four. What then about the whole? Would not that from which no part is absent be whole? Uh, again, what are we talking about? Parts and holes. The whole. Whole, right? So we have one statement, two statements about the whole. Again, no connection. Good, good. Well, except that he's bringing up parts, parts, parts. But there's still no connection, is there? Not to the self or the one. Yeah, and whole. Good. Go to the next one, please. Accordingly then, from both these consequences, the one would be composed of parts, by being a whole and by possessing parts. Necessarily. OK, now it goes back. Okay. What's wrong with that conclusion from what we built? Come on, from what we just, does it follow? No. All right, where do the come on, where's the weakness? It doesn't show the relationship between the one, the self, and whole and parts. It just concludes all of them together. Well it concludes about the one. Yeah. After all that. And we haven't related the one to any of those pieces yet. Yeah. Look here. He's going back now. Right, he's going back now to the idea of the one. Yeah. And he's adding to it the idea of reality. True mm. enough. Huh? Accordingly then, in both ways, the one will be many, but not one, pardon me. Accordingly then, from both of these consequences, the one would be composed of parts being, right? Mm -hmm. That word is being with a capital B or reality, a whole and possessing parts. Well, it's not. Hey, now he has, he has the one uh, composed of parts. And in reality, but look here, isn't that curious? The, the, look here, the one is composed of parts and, and of reality, but this, you see, uh, because it possesses parts. Right? It's a whole because it possesses parts. So wait a minute, is he now connecting together
Is he connecting the idea of whole? Yeah. Uh, See, the, the question, um, um, Okay. What kind of one has parts, is composed of parts, so is a whole, but is in reality. What? What kind of one? So, on, on reality. So, what? Now look here, the idea of reality in Greek thought, right? So it says, is experienced as the brilliant light of being, and in that experience, you can infer a set of ideas. Right. So that, this is the, <clears throat> and from it you can say, oh my gosh, that's an experience of pure beauty. Oh, it is most real. Uh, it is mind turning upon itself. Uh, uh, the very spirit of it, everything is perfectly just and fair. Uh, and it's inherently intelligible, so we can call that inherently contains the logos. But if you, hey, this is what is assumed by the word on in Greek, right? Now, Do any of these have parts and composed of parts so it's a whole? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. 
The answer is no. No. But he says that it does. But if this would be the way a Greek at that time would view that statement, he would have a puzzle. Now you should have the same puzzle. Right. Pierre? Yeah. Can you say that again? I guess I didn't understand what you were trying to, to do. If somebody, if there's this kind of reality that's composed of parts, then... Ultimate reality. Ultimate reality. Only. Okay, what's that Greek word? Only. Only? Ontos. Ontos. So, if there's an ontos that's composed of parts, then it would have all of those things in the circle? What are those things in the circle? Those are what are called ideas. They are inferred from that experience. They are not separate and distinct intellectual objects. Okay. But those would then be parts, and those parts would compose the whole? But, yeah, go ahead. You may be close to saying something. Go ahead. I, I just, it's a question. So those are the parts that compose the whole ontos? Instead of a he asked. Um, yes. Oh, that's if you take all of these together and treat these as parts, And together, they would be a whole. But wait a minute. Uh, now you have to talk about. Uh, what, in what way do you want to say these are parts? Like are parts di divisible, distinct, separate? Say yes, just to make it easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? So. Almost like facets of a diamond. There's something like. I mean, they could be considered like facets of a diamond, couldn't they? In some ways. I'm just saying, you do reflect upon the experience. You do come up with those, but they're not parts the way we understand parts. Mm -hmm. So I was suggesting aspects or facets. But or, not parts. But not parts. So basically, the guy goofed. Yeah, we hope he'll get better as he goes on. It won't. Maybe he's kind of warming up. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, agree? So far, this may fit, but these are not parts. Right. If they can be said to be inferred, therefore they have a different mode of existence than a part mm -hmm. to a whole. Well, look her. Let's keep this because we're going to have some fun with it in a minute. All right, okay? All right, go ahead. Accordingly then, in both ways, the one would, will be many, but not one. True. Um, hold it. Now we go back, hey. Now we're going back to what? The other one. Many. Now we're going back to make a point about the one. Oh, all right. Um, so, the, so if this is true, then uh, the one will be many. But look here, 
That doesn't follow from what we've been doing. Because You mean it's not a whole if you say it will be many. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And and we're making a statement about the one now, going back, making a statement on the one. Yeah. What was the last con hey, the last point we were making is the one would be composed of parts part. being a whole. Yeah. 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 Possessing parts. Yeah. In reality. So because of that he concludes, therefore, it must be a many. Yeah. Ah. Well, uh, look what he does now. Come on, one, another step. But it must indeed not be many, but oneself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But it must not be many. Hey, look here. Mm. Is there a subject in that sense? Um, uh, the verb is they, or no, the she, verb, and that means look, it must. Look, look her. Okay. Stay with it. Mm -hmm. um, but indeed, but it, it must indeed not be many, but one self. Saying the it isn't really referring to a subject. Now, look here. What's the difficulty in making that kind of a statement? Is, is he jumping now again? It looks like Going from the one that's many, and now he's making a statement about the one self? Mm -hmm. yes. Why does it follow if he's making statements about the one? that it follows for the one self. Well, it has to. Whoever's saying that should speak louder. It has to, right? Yeah. I mean, if you make a statement about the one, anything that is one, one self, one fill in the blank, would have all of those qualities of the one. Oh, so if we add material to the text, it will help bridge the gap. <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 urge, I'm urging that. But oh, okay. is that okay. legitimate? Add some material. Yeah. No. Oh. Um, no. Well, okay. Is it also true that... Is, is that adding something or is that reasoning? I, I'm, I'm misunderstanding, like... Well, same thing. It, reasoning is adding? Yeah, if the reasoning oh, isn't, no. isn't in the text. It will neither be a whole nor possess parts if one is one. It will not. Hey, it will neither be a whole nor possess parts if the one is one. Uh-oh, what did you just do with what we built? Wipe it out. Wipes it out. Huh. Look, let's make sure we're right. Brad? You have to ask the right guy. That seems to follow, yes. It will neither be a whole nor possess parts of the one that they want. Yeah. First of all, he said that the one self precludes any division. Yep. And then he describes a one that could be made up of parts. Yes. And now he has a one that cannot be made up of parts. Right. And so 
He's and, got uh, several different ones going on. Yeah. Uh, does it follow in some uh, rational order? Or are no. we back to <laughs> it's his order. trying to patch up together as he proceeds to jump back and forth without any apparent reason why one follows the other? Hmm. It, it seems that inherent in the one self are all the dynamics of a one that is. But ultimately, in this hypothesis, he has to di reject all those dynamics of That's the one true. that is. But he can still describe the possibility of their existence. Yeah, and we, yeah, that's certainly true. Uh, we want to know why he's reasoning that way. Well, if it's the first cause and has in it all possible ways of developing itself, then the dynamics would be there, and yet you could still deny them. Okay. Does it solve this problem, though? Not logically, no. 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 But so it looks like we're coming close to a conclusion. It's a good reason why this work can be rejected. <clears throat> right, right? No. <laughs> Go ahead, try to save it. Well, I, I, Go ahead. I don't know where you guys are at, but I, I'm not been rejecting our amenities. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> Look, um, we're at eight. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Nine is the next Parmenides quote. Please look at it. Brad, read it aloud. Is it not the case then that if it can have no part, then neither can it have a beginning, nor a middle, nor an end? For those such as these would already be parts of self. Would you agree that is manifestly absurd? <laughs> right? Because the self does not have beginning, middle, and end. It's not a, if it is important, is he explaining it? No. Right? Is he? No. Do, by the way, do you have a self? Um, I think so. Oh, does it have a beginning, middle, and end? No. No. Well, he's wrong again, you see. Why would he be wrong? Well, because it doesn't make any sense. From your experience, you would say it doesn't apply to the idea of self. I have one. And that statement doesn't fit my experience. Right, but... Isn't he doing something? Like, <laughs> isn't he exploring such conditions? Right? I mean, it might be obvious, but not to everyone, maybe. Okay, look here. Let's try to save the guy then. Okay. All right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. But, by the way, does it look like you're going to be able to? Yeah, come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> Steve, come on, what do you think? <laughs> we voted before you showed up. We said the next person that comes to the door needs to answer. Oh, okay. Uh, All right, okay, let's fish a couple of more. By the way, now we have the idea of self, don't we not? And we needed certain ideas about the self. And now we have uh, self. Uh, Beginning, uh, middle, end, right? Um, but it, it, by the way, would you say it fits? Has he made the, has he offered any examples of what he means? No. Or how it fits in the sequence of statements? Well, in terms of parts, yeah. In you terms of that, parts. Right. Yeah, that one part about parts in the whole fits. Yeah. What? 
fits the his reasoning. Wait a minute. What does it fit? No hole, no par no parts. There By the way, is that what the one is? As far as I understand, what he's doing. Oh, what did he conclude just before? There'll be neither parts nor hole. Did you just reject what you put forward? I see. Wait. Yes. Well, what kind of reasoning is this? He leads you to one conclusion, he slips in a, another statement that contradicts the prior? No, he's saying it cannot have parts. The self cannot have parts. By, by the way, does that begin in middle and end? Those sound like parts to me. Yeah, yeah, me too. Therefore, it doesn't fit what he formally said. Well, it's not going to have those if it's well, has well. no parts. This guy needed an editor. Look. An editor. We have to say Plato, don't we? Yes. No. All right, we can go a couple of more steps just to have some fun. Yes? It's almost like the beginning, middle, and end stuff goes... Pardon? Do it again, please. It's almost as if when he's talking about the beginning, the middle, and the end, it's almost like he had a different narrative going on, and then he connected it back to when you were talking about before of the experience with the ideas that are inferred in the experience. Because experience Another, we have to time. add that stuff to make sense of it. Yeah, we have to screw yeah. it up. Yeah, uh, that ain't legitimate. <laughs> Why right? not? Churches do it all. I time. mean, he has to fly by. <laughs> he either has to reason his way to a sound conclusion, or he can't. That's all. Why well, there's something going on we miss? Or how can we show that beginning, middle, and end are parts? Right? They aren't. Well, then he's right on track then. Wait a minute. Are beginning and end, sir, are beginning, middle, and end parts? That was a story. Huh? That was a story. Uh, are there situations where the idea of beginning, middle, and end are not parts? Um, yeah, like the Pythagorean theorem. No. Yeah. The therefore? The Pythagorean theorem has no beginning, middle, and end. And therefore? And it's true. Doesn't fit. Because he could have specified in what way, beginning, middle, and end. Does he? No. So it's a secondhand work. You know, Plato was drinking wine one night, got loaded, and this. Or something else is going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now watch the following reasoning but try not to laugh all right Barbara okay um, and certainly the beginning and end are indeed the limit of each part wait a minute is that right it's the first time I, I hear Wait a minute, is that right? I don't think so. I don't think so, because... No, because well, because beginning and end are, if you were going to make them parts of anything, they'd be parts of a whole. Yeah. Like parts of a park. Yeah. Goodness beginning and middle end aren't parts. No. Guy's a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, That's another so one. Obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I don't know. Good. Uh, it's going to get worse. Something existing in time, wouldn't it? Have a beginning and end, but not necessarily. But not necessarily. Uh, and not necessarily a part of anything, really. All right. Okay. Accordingly, then, the one is unlimited if it has neither, if it has either beginning or end. Now, does he now assign that to the one? Yes. Well, isn't that nice of him? A little bit confusing. Right. Because he was just on the self a moment ago. 
Right, he was on the self, now he switches to? The one. The one. Ha! Yeah. Is that more of this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jumping around? Yes. And even if you put them together properly, it's not going to make sense. Even if you put them together properly. What would be, is, when you say even if they were put together properly, well, if you link together all of the ideas of the one, all the ideas oh. of, gotcha. of the whole, all the ideas of self, right? We can just go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. It's still not going to make a yeah. coherent, rational whole no. or sequence. Yeah. Gotcha. Good. It's going to get worse. <laughs> all right. Okay. Accordingly, then, it must also be without form, figure, form, shape. Mm -hmm. For it can neither participate of the circular nor of the straight or rectilinear. Now, look here. Now he's jumping into what realm? Here, physical. Here. Here. Two dimensional. Yeah. And before this, we were making points about the nature of reality. Yep. Did he just shift? Oh, I guess you can make points about the one and apply them to the other without any reasoning. Yes. Yeah. No, yes. No. Oh, no. Yes. Maybe. Somebody over there is voting yes. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, you can. <laughs> Two voices of partial dissent. <laughs> okay. For the circular is indeed that in which the extremities must be in every way equally distant from the middle. And the straight is indeed that in which the middle is situated in line with both the extremes. Now, up to this point, he's been talking about the beginning, middle, and end, and it turns out he's using geometrical examples, is he not? Yeah. 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 Is, is that a narrow use of these terms? And are they parts? Ah, well, okay, let's go. Okay. Uh, I lost my place. Darn it. Um, 15, family is 15. Oh, thank you. It is not the case, then, that the... Should be, I think, is it not, given the... Is it not the case, then, that the one will then possess parts and be many by participating of either a straight or of a round figure? Entirely so. Hey, what do you think of that reasoning? Come on, hmm. go slow. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if you, if for example, you put straight together with the straight is that in which the middle is in situated in line with both the extremes. You do have a middle and two extremes at least. And okay. those would seem to be parts of the straight yeah. and a manyness. Yeah. By the way, what kind of one must they be talking about now? Uh, some kind of physical. What? Some yeah. kind of physical or geometric one. Yeah. 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 Is that a different idea of the one than normally? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. And these are definitions he's dealing with. Oh, you see. Definition of a circle. The, what? He's dealing with definitions now. Definition yeah. of a circle, definition of a line. Yeah. Now he's applying it to the idea of the... What? Well, is that curious? Does it fit? Come on. Hmm. Hey. No, it's kind of weird. Look here. Kind of like this whole thing, this whole thing, the idea of reality, that can be easily called, and is called, huh? one. It's called one being. Now, above the idea of one being is a pure one, which is said to be equivalent to uh, the highest concept of a divinity, right? Called the one. So look here. 
There are all kinds of uses of the idea of one. The highest expression for a deity, one as one being, one as a whole, one as particular parts, one as a beginning, one as middle, one as end, right? So the idea of one can be used in a wide variety of ways. What use of the idea of one and in what way is he now considering this idea of the one from the last paragraph? On the lowest. Read it again, Barbara. Um. It is, is it not the case then that the one will possess parts and be many by participating of either a straight or a round figure or other round figure? Hey, the one is participating. Look here. Which one of these ideas of the one would be participating in geometrical objects? I don't think. There is one because the one is usually the highest. And the one that's the highest wouldn't have that description. It goes against the nature. Well, it's, it's, it's only a mistake. Well, it's just mm. another mistake. Mm. Uh, Hmm. We're now at 16. Go ahead. Accordingly then, it is neither straight nor round, seeing that it has no part. What? What did he just do? Hmm. He took away what he just said. Yeah. As if we should see that that was an impossibility. But it, doesn't, it isn't there. But it isn't there. That's a step of reasoning. Good. Why did he even bring it up then? Why, I said, why did he even bring it up then? Of course. <laughs> By the way, you could say that for any one of these statements, couldn't you? Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. And certainly, yeah. being such, it will exist. It's sorry. And certainly, being such. It will indeed exist in no way whatsoever, for it will neither exist in another nor in itself. How so? Hold it. Uh, what do you make of that? Being is this high idea of being metaphysical. Go ahead. Yeah, and certainly being such it will indeed exist in no way whatsoever. For it will neither exist in another nor in itself. That's a very strange stuff. Because isn't he saying that it exists in no way because it can't exist in either of these two ways? And he hasn't shown why existing in either of those two ways are the only ways in which anything can exist in the realm of reality which he should show. Yeah. Yeah, it's a mess. Um, so we're on 18? Almost. Say, let me give you a question, okay?
Hey, does this dude have a curious way of reasoning? Look at this. He starts off with an idea in the first paragraph about the one. The next paragraph, he concludes about the self. Then he goes back to making statements about the one and concludes about the self. Mm -hmm. Then he makes other statements about the one or the whole and he concludes about the self. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you tell me uh, what numbered paragraphs Parmenides is moving from discussing something called the one and then when he reaches an idea of the self? What numbered paragraphs are there? Uh, one to two and six to seven. Well, one, then it would be the second. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. And then six to seven, he does that? Go ahead. Uh, both six and seven? No. Seven. Seven, seven. is about the self, yeah. Uh, is there another one? Somebody said nine behind. Take a look. Is it? Yeah. Okay. What else? Come on. Nine. Come on. More. Eighteen. Perhaps eighteen. Yeah. Now, look here. Just stay with us for a few minutes. Do you find that curious? That every statement he makes about the self does not follow from the preceding statements. None of it does. But as he reasons, he reasons this way, doesn't he? Find that curious? Yes. 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 Why? Because it doesn't fit. See, it seems like it doesn't fit. Well, like what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's Plato. The guy never makes a mistake. <laughs> okay. This is the way in which uh, people in Plato's day reflected on the Parmenides. All right? Now, we only can conclude that by reading people like Proclus. Because he gives a view of what he believes to be the common view current at his time, and he quotes various people over the long history of Platonism. And he makes a, just one curious statement. He said, all of these arguments are nothing other than metaphysical assertions or positions that have their parallel among the, the great gods. What does that mean, you see? Then, if you are familiar, you have to be now familiar with or have a curious subject. And the subject must be 
you have to find what set of metaphysical assertions what set of metaphysical assertions have their parallel among the Greek gods hey when taken hierarchically You know what that means? That means we should be able to get a book on Greek metaphysics, right? Outline each one of the principles and see whether or not they can be described in such a way that they can easily be identified as among the Greek gods. Now, it's either true or it's not true. I right, take a look at the first one. You mean if one is, could the one be many? Yeah. Then neither can any part belong to the self, nor can the self be a whole. Right? No part can belong to the self, nor can the self be a whole. Well, then it must be something that uh, is beyond. Part and whole. Wait a minute. You see, um, accordingly then, neither can any part belong to the whole, nor the self be a whole. Therefore, at this point, the self must be what? One. Partless? Yes, partless. Right? And being partless, it can't be a whole. Right. What? Right. Hmm. It can't be a many. Yeah, well, there can't be a whole. Okay. So therefore, like, we're not all a part of God's body? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> So, um, now if you were to now get into some work on metaphysical assertions, I wonder what would be defined by this definition. Now, he calls that, of course, the self. Um, So therefore, um, uh, what is hey? What is what is in the realm of reality? Right? What would fit that? Brilliant light of being. Brilliant light of being. Well, you see, um, beauty. Yeah. Yeah. now we would have to look at this and say, no, we can't do that. We can't treat these as parts. And you're raising the point, well, maybe if you took the idea of beauty, 
the pure experience of beauty doesn't have parts or a beginning, middle, or end. It doesn't have any of these qualities. So in a strict sense, uh, is it a whole? Is, is beauty a whole? No. Oh. Well, then it can't be beauty. Well, try it again. Look here. Can beauty be considered to be, it must be uh, without parts or whole? Well, there's no parts in beauty. <laughs> But you might say it could be a whole. Well, anyway, that would be a whole without parts. Right. Uh-oh. Well, now you're, you're thinking, uh, let us assume our answer that the self is like beauty, because it is something that uh, cannot have parts, nor is it a whole. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hold on to that reason. Could you say that about all the other things as well? Yeah. Oh. Then uh, the only conclusion it, you could make is that that idea can apply to all of the members in what are called the ideas but not to anyone specifically, but a general quality of all of the members that can be said to be or inferred from the brilliant light of being. Agree? Yeah. All right, now go back to the original statement, read it for us. Number two. That accordingly, Accordingly, then, neither can part belong to self, nor can self be a whole. That's right. Oh, can't be a whole. Can't be parts. So we can't say these are wholes or having parts. But then, if that equally can apply to all of these, then it's certainly not distinctive, is it? Yeah. But how did we get to being? How did we get down to being in the first? Well, um, um, of course, of all, see, um, you don't get to the idea of being until you go further in the argument. Uh, This is being, right? What we're, what this, yes. Yeah. Yes. But the idea of being is not in the first two statements. So, so that would be a further criticism of using any of these ideas to explain what he's talking about when he's yeah. applying that argument to the self. Was the conclusion that those that beauty can't be a whole, or or, or is? So, Julie, what'd you conclude? That it can't be a whole because it does not have parts. Okay, look, try this. Would you agree? Among all of the ideas of the one, there's only that fits. That's the highest notion of the one. So you're saying there's no first hypothesis, right? Is that what you're saying? No. That description of the self matches what can be said about the one as the pure one, mm -hmm. the highest notion of the one. Okay, cool, yeah. Agree? Yeah. Oh. But then, right, we just equated one and self, right? Oh, 
Oh, wait a minute. Could that be what he's doing? He's reasoning about the one and then he equates it to the self? Yeah, well, that's what happened. Oh, oh. So I guess the first conclusion could be it matches the idea of the self, matches the perfect idea of the one. Oh, oh. No, no. What happens in the second one? Come on. The seventh. What can you do with that? This, come on, as you look at the seventh, does the seventh confirm our conclusion? Yes. Hey, is that right? Hey, the conclusion we just came to. Yeah. He spells out. Oh, yeah. Ah! Well, can then we have a right to breathe a sigh of relief? Okay. Right? and say he supports the, the second conclusion by his reasoning in the seventh. Does he then proceed on to the ninth? Yeah. Okay. Proceed, you mean this Would you read this, the ninth? Is it not the case then that if it can have no part then neither can have a beginning or a middle nor an end. For such as these, for such as these would already be parts of the self. Yes. Um. Would you agree he's rejecting all of those ideas as belonging to the self? Yes. Right? Such that it that it that it's equivalent to one. Right. See what you're saying? You're saying if you look at this carefully, you can see that there's been something really going on that's curious. All the prior ideas that you just described are not included in the idea of the self. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like you've made, what would happen if you string all of these conclusions together? Beautiful. Would they fit? So far, so good. So far? Yeah. Oh. Now try 18. What do you got in A chain? Want to do it? Sure. For on the one hand, by being in another, it would somehow be circularly comprehended by that in which it is, and would be touched by self in many places. Thus, on the other hand, it is also impossible that the one which is also partless, and which does not participate of the circle, 
to be touched in a circular way in many places. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, 17 and certainly by being such it will indeed exist in no way whatsoever for it will neither exist in another nor in itself right yeah, that's what he's doing. Uh, look here uh, now, you have to have that statement in your mind, and you have to ask, is there some metaphysical description of a Greek god that might fit that definition? And the answer is yes. Kronos. What is it? Right? Kronos. No. No. Look. Zeus reflects upon himself, his own ideas. This, therefore, must exist prior, because what you possess is independent of you. So therefore, these ideas must have a prior and independent existence. Right. Now, now look here. <clears throat> Would you say Zeus is in himself and in another? Because it can it can either come on it either can identify Kronos or how Kronos functions in Zeus. Yeah, it seems like Kronos, Kronos is in another and in himself, not Zeus. Because Kronos is in Zeus and also in himself. Yes. Yeah. Therefore? Therefore, Kronos would, make, would, would match that metaphysical description. Right. And there, hey, if that's the case, could it be possible that we can do the same thing for all of the others? Possible. Well, see, at this time in the Greek text, there's a note on the bottom. <laughs> at this point, they stop to have coffee. <laughs> Good idea. Those Greeks, they're always at the right time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you.